I'll be starting with little introduction about periradicular diseases and then some basics about inflammation, classification of periapical diseases, types of periapical diseases in detail and then conclusion. So this picture depicts about inflammation, how infection triggers inflammation. When there is bacteria and bi bacterial byproducts entering the tooth tissue, what happens is there is cellular response and vascular response as it happens in any part of the body. So cellular response is triggered by attraction of neutrophils, macrophages to the site of inflammation and there is complement activation which results in chemotaxis and attraction of these cells into the site of inflammation. And there are mast cells and basophils also acting during inflammatory response. In vascular response, there is uh, vasodilatation resulting in gaps forming between the endothelial cells which results in plasma extravasation into the surrounding tissues which results in accumulation of fluid in the interstitial spaces resulting in edema. And there is a release of kininogen which results in formation of bradykinin. So ultimately uh, prostaglandins, leukotrienes which are derived from arachidonic acid and the bradykinin along with the cytokines uh, result in the response of pain. So the patient feels pain because of the release of these inflammatory mediators and when the osteoclasts come into action because of the inflammatory mediators they get attracted and osteoclasts are formed because of giant cells and which results in bone resorption. So this is what happens when there is inflammation in any part of the body. So when bacteria or the dental caries goes deep into the pulp resulting in pulpal pathology and then when it enters the periradicular tissue through the apical foramen, the inflammatory response is triggered. So the cellular response and the vascular response results in pain, pain response as well as bone resorption in the surrounding periapical tissues. So now let's start with the classification of periradicular diseases. According to Engel, it is classified as painful and non-painful disease. Under painful again, it can be symptomatic acute apical periodontitis or advanced apical periodontitis. So when you say advanced apical periodontitis, there are different types which come under this. The acute apical abscess, phoenix abscess, this is nothing but acute exaggeration of chronic uh, disease. Suppurative response also comes under advanced apical periodontitis. Non-painful disease includes condensing osteitis and con chronic apical periodontitis. Under chronic apical periodontitis, again you have periapical granuloma, apical cyst and suppurative apical periodontitis. There are different classifications as you know, it's given by different authors. So Grossman has classified periradicular disease again into different types. So, there is symptomatic apical periodontitis, asymptomatic, external root resorption, persistent apical periodontitis and periapical disease of non-endodontic origin. So in symptomatic and asymptomatic again you have different types which includes apical periodontitis, acute alveolar abscess and phoenix abscess in under symptomatic type and under asymptomatic you have apical periodontitis and then chronic comes under asymptomatic radicular cyst and condensing osteitis. WHO classification of periradicular disease is numbered like this, like K04.4 to K04.8. So 4.4 includes acute apical periodontitis, whereas 4.5 is chronic apical periodontitis. So you are clear with 4 and 5, acute and chronic. Then comes 4.6. Under 4.6, you have different subdivisions. Well, K04.6 in general, it means periapical abscess with sinus. So the subdivision includes where the sinus opening is present, whether it is into the maxillary sinus, where, where it is numbered as K04.6. If it is 4.61, it is the sinus that is opening into the nasal cavity, K04.62, which is sinus into the oral cavity, K04.63, which is periapical abscess with sinus to the skin, where you see the sinus opening onto the facial skin. K04.7 is periapical abscess with no sinus. So if you say 4.6, it is abscess with sinus. It can be anywhere in the uh, surrounding tissues. 4.7 is abscess but no sinus. 4.8 includes cyst. So radicular cyst or periapical cyst. 
K04.80 is apical and lateral cyst whereas K04.81 is residual cyst and 4.82 is inflammatory periodontal cyst. So let's start with each condition in detail. Symptomatic apical periodontitis. The definition is localized inflammation of the periodontal ligament in the apical region. Why do we say symptomatic is there are symptoms that uh, patient presence. So, it, it can be caused in a vital tooth or a non-vital tooth. When does it occur in a vital tooth is when the patient has experienced occlusal trauma because of abnormal occlusal contact, high restoration. After a restoration that has not been established till proper occlusal contact, that can result in symptomatic apical periodontitis when the patient comes back to you after two or two, two to three days after the uh, restoration has been done. Wedging a foreign object in between the teeth or traumatic blow to the tooth. So, traumatic injuries can also cause symptomatic condition.